Welcome to Lamins.com and our lab video series on MPLS. You can find complete lists of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to show you how to connect multiple IPv6 networks across MPLS. So the feature for this is specifically called 6PE, as you guys might have heard before. And the whole idea is to leverage the tunneling ability of MPLS so that the only routers that need to run dual stack, which is IPv4 and v6 on the same routers, are the PE routers. Since these are going to be the router that needs to be connected to the all the IPv6 sites, and this is where the name 6PE comes from, while all of the P routers in the network can remain pretty much oblivious of the fact that the traffic going across the network at the time are IPv6, which means that there's no need for them to run or even support IPv6. So the IPv6 can just be tunneled across the IPv4 core, and the whole concept works pretty much the same way as any other IPv6 tunneling technology. So some of the things that we're going to be doing in this lab is configuring basic IPv6, and this includes IPv6 IP addresses at the interface, some of the static routes, and we're going to also enable SPF version 3 for our IPv6 sites. Okay, so when we have all those setups, then we're going to start implementing our 6PE solution. Now for lab topology, we have eight routers, R1 through R8 and one switch, switch 1, with R2, 3, 4, and 5 connected in almost full mesh topology across serial point-to-point -point links, while the other routers are connected across uh, multiple layer 2 VLANs as shown in this diagram. Okay, now for our layer 3 topology, we have our MPLS core, at the middle, with the router R1 and R2 being the PE routers, and the R3, R5, and R4 in these cases are the PE routers. We also have four separate IPv6 networks, and these are represented by the router R6, R7, and R8, and the switch switch one. So you can see that all of these local subnets has the IPv6 addresses that we're going to try to provide connectivity between them across our MPLS core. Some of the IP addresses that you want to make a quick note are the loop back 10 through 12 on each of these routers. So all of our IPv6 routers gonna, and switch is going to have their loopbacks in this format. It starts with 2001 and then followed by X, which is the router number. So for example, R6 loopback 10 is going to be 2016 colon colon 1 slash 64. And uh, R6 loopback 11 will be 2016 colon colon 1 slash 64 and so on. So Okay, so we're going to be using those as our test subnets. So for R6 and R7, we're going to be configuring OSPF v3 with the area 16 for R6 and area 27 for R7. While our R8 and switch 1 is going to be using static routes for all of the routings. And also between R1 and R2, we will be configuring IBGP sessions that it's going to be using to exchange all the IPv6 routes. And these are part of the address family IPv6 that you see in a second here. You might immediately notice that the whole setup is very similar to MPLS VPN. And you are pretty much right about that, as you will see that the whole solution is going to be leveraging the fact that the packets will be carried across the MPLS network using two labels, just like the traditional MPLS VPN, with the only exception that we are not really running VRF, at least not yet in this lab, because the next lab we're going to be looking at add-on to this with the inclusion of the VRF at the other remote sites. So for our lab scenarios, you are asked to configure PE routers to provide connectivity between multiple IPv6 sites across an existing MPLS network. And we can start off with the basic IPv6 configuration with task number one. So first we need to configure an IPv6 addresses on interface of R1 and 2, as shown in the diagrams. So these will be all of these interfaces right here that connects to all the IPv6 sites. And then we need to configure OSPF area 16 on R1 facing R6 and then area 27 on R2 facing R7. So these will be just two area right here. And then we need to configure static routes for R1 and R2 to point to R8 and switch one respectively. And these are for the loopback interfaces on the R8 and switch one, since we're not running any kind of routing protocol here. And we are only allowed to use one static route on each router. Okay, so Everything on the IPv6 router, or sites routers, have already been configured. We're just now going to complete the configuration on the PE routers themselves. Okay, so first let's kind of figure out the subnet that we're going to use as part of our static routes before we start on the configuration. So for R8, the early back 10, 11, and 12 will be 2018. So those will be in common, and then it's going to be followed by either 0, 0, 0, 001 or 02. Okay, so we can easily summarize those since these are all contiguous subnet. So for R8, we can come up with static routes that points to 2001, 8, slash, 62. Okay, 62 covers 
for contiguous slash 64 subnets. And same thing with our uh, switch one. Switch one, although it doesn't really have a router number, we're just going to use a number 10 for that. So same thing would be 2001 10 double colon slash 62. Okay, so that would be pretty much the basis of our static routes from our PE router. Okay, and then our and switch one can just have a default static routes pointing to their next hop. Okay, so let's first start our configuration on the router R1. First thing we need to do is to enable IPv6 routing with the command IPv6 unicast routing. And then we need to make sure that we also enable Ceph with IPv6. Although it should be enabled by default, but so we just to make sure that the command is in there. And then we're going to have to configure an interface for R1. It's going to be, let's see if I can switch to pencil right here, interface fast. 0 slash 1.16 and 18 with the IP address of the corresponding subnets. So first with the f slash uh, 0 slash 1.16 IPv6 address will be at 2001 0, 0, 1, 6, double colon 1 slash 64. Okay, and then we also need to enable OSPF area 16. So the command for that is IPv6 OSPF1 area 16. Same thing with FAST01. You can see that the neighbor adjacency came up right away. With uh, Now we have the loading to full. Okay, next is a dot .18 IPv6 address 2001. Actually, let me just do up arrow. might be easier. And instead of colon 16, it's colon 18. Okay, next we need to come up with a static route. So that will be IPv6 route 2001. We said we're going to use 8 double colon slash 62 and the next hop is let me just copy this and then eight okay so that would be our next hop right there and i always recommend when you configure pretty much all of the igp routing protocols is to use passive default command just to make sure that we have a complete control of what interface is participating in the igp protocol so here we're putting in passive default and then we're going to do no passive on just the fast 0.1.16 Okay, so that's to work even with OSPF version 3. Next, we need to verify, or we should verify, basic network connectivity to the next hop IP. So first, it's trying to ping out R6, and that would be 2001.0.0.16.6. You can see that's pingable, and then 18.8. And that is pingable as well. And let's make sure that we are receiving OSPF routes from R6. You can see that we are learning all three of the R6 loopback interfaces. This is loopback 10, 11, and 12. Okay, next is going to be configuration on R2. Same thing, IPv6, unicast routing, IPv6, Ceph. And for R2, we're dealing with a FAST00 and FAST01 with these corresponding subnets. Okay, so in the FAST00, FAST that's facing R7, will be IPv6. Address 2001.0.0.27, double colon 2, slash 64. Okay, and then uh, we have to configure OSPF. We use process 1, area, we set 27. Okay. Now for a fast 01, IPv6, address 2001.0.0, believe it's a 102 colon 2 slash 64. Make sure you no shut on that. And that one we don't need routing protocol, so we're good. And then we go to the IPv6 router, OSPF. That would be a process ID 1. Again, passive default. And then no passive on the fast 00, which is the interface that we're going to be we are running OSPF with router 7. Okay, and we are now back to full and the last command we need is the static routes and we say we're going to do a 2001 10 double colon slash 62 so 2001 10 double colon slash 62 pointing to next top let me just copy that and that should be a double colon 10 which is our switch one vlan 102 interface okay Again, quick verification. Let's ping 2001 00 27 
7. Okay, we can ping router 7 and then see if we can ping switch 1. You can see we can ping that as well. Okay, show IPv6 route OSPF. Make sure that the R2 is learning R7 loopbacks and looks like it is learning that. So it will be 10, loopback 10, loopback 11, and loopback 12. Okay, so that should complete the basic configuration of the IPv6 on the PE routers. And that's pretty much our task number one.